and your dad works in a Chinese takeaway, how emotionally liberated do you think he's going to be? He's not going <laughs> to see your perspective ever. Of course, your dad's going to be like emotionally retarded because he spent more time with a walk than with human beings. <laughs> Welcome to Rise to Meet You, a comedy podcast about Asian culture. I'm your host, Nigel Ng. And I'm your co-host, Evelyn Mark. Yes. Yay. Welcome back, people. <laughs> Another episode. Thank you so much for enjoying my plug for Manscaped last week. Oh it was very nice. God. Very nice. <laughs> Nigel just told me he opened our Zoom conversation now with, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been getting a lot of good reviews, you know? I was like, yeah, yeah, people like the plug. He's like, no, no, I mean, the results of my manscaping yeah. has been getting a lot of good reviews. And I was like, yeah. I was like, why did you have to tell me that? Why? I thought we were friends. We're friends. Friend tell, friends tell each other everything. I mean, <laughs> I don't need to know about that, Nigel. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh. Well, now you do. So it's too late. I can't, I can't take the information back from you now. Okay. <laughs> so gross. But something. So gross. Well, yesterday I got uh I got tagged in like a post in subtle Malaysian traits, and it turns out people people are finding like pictures of me as a kid. Yeah, you know, which is so adorable. Did you see? Did you see the photos? Did you see the photos of me as a kid, as a child in I kindergarten? I see the photos. Um, because they tag the rice to meet you pod, and sometimes they tag me as well. Um, and you look like such a nerd. What do you mean, nerd? <laughs> like the biggest nerd, Nigel. No. Yes, Which photo are. are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll overlay the photo in here, okay, editor. Nigel, so there's a photo of you um winning a math competition. Okay, yeah, of course I need to look like a nerd. You need to look the part. You, you look so nerdy. And then there's a photo of you just, I think it's just a class photo of you um, mm -hmm. when you're just a kid with glasses. You're so skinny and you have such a, you look like an uncle already at what? that age. I don't know what age you are there, but you look like an uncle. Like that's Uncle Roger as a kid. <laughs> that's how Uncle Roger looks and he should look now. No. So funny. Okay, fine. I, do, I did look like a nerd. I was very smart. All right. <laughs> it's very smart. There was no time for fashion advice. It, it, the so school funny. I went to was very strict, very regimented. Everybody had to. We we started school at seven thirty. We finished at three thirty. Did you have? Uh, did you have like uniforms? Yeah, we all had uniforms. Oh. See, it's great. Look at how well it worked out. <laughs> don't you want to send a, your? You don't want to send your kid to a school like that, you know? We don't have time for independent thought here, okay? Independent we, we, thought. This is not the time for independent thought. Some people need to tell how to feel, and I was one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you end up with Evelyn, who is always encouraged to have independent thought. Look where she ends up now. On the same podcast as a guy <laughs> <laughs> who, who was encouraged to not have independent thought. Yeah, well, the thing is, we are both here, but uh, I started from, like, lower than you started, you know? Uh, what do you mean? I, oh, I achieved oh, social you... mobility because I didn't have independent thought. How great is that? <laughs> well, I mean, we're both working class because my parents were working class as hey, well. Listen, but speak for yourself. Speak for yourself, you know? I have a favorite <laughs> brand of whiskey, so speak for yourself. I'm not joining in your working class mannerisms. My working class mannerisms. Speak for yourself, please. Oh, I only wear God. niche fragrances now. I don't even wear the fashion brand fragrances. Speak for yourself. Creed? Don't call me working cra class. Yeah. <laughs> niche fragrance. Entry level, admittedly, but still a niche fragrance. I wear Creed Aventus, people. Not not a plug for them. I wish it was sponsored the part, but that's what I wear. If you want to smell like Nigel Ung or Uncle Roger, Creed Aventus. If you want to <laughs> smell like me, don't shower. No, <laughs> See, independent thought. This is what it leads to. <laughs> uh, no, I wear Dolce and Gabbana, uh, Dolce and Gabbana Lampratis. Is oh, what it's called? The really? pink one. Very summery, 
very fruity oh, smell. Oh, interesting. Nice. Because I never smelled it on you. <laughs> when do you when do you wear it? When do you wear it? I wear it when I don't meet you, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> Why I do not deserve to, s- to smell you nicely? You know, ah, you you know what I mean. But uh, no, I I have I I just uh, it's been in Sweden and when I've been in London, so <laughs> I haven't had it with me. <laughs> So it's been different places. Don't call me working me class, please. Okay, I huh? find it highly offensive. If you call me working class. It's so funny because everybody in the like in the UK want to be called working class. As yeah, but they're not. Like, they're not. I know. They're all middle class. You go on skiing holidays. You're not working class. Just admit it. You know. Uh, <laughs> but um, these photos that you have, like, was it? I mean, you have them, right? It's so. Well, ha- why haven't you put them up yourself? I don't even know. Like, why would you put photos up of yourself as a kid? And these are from like hi- my high school. Okay, the nerdy ones are from my high school yearbook, the one where I won the math competition. That is from like a newspaper years ago. I-, I didn't keep those clippings, but I also had one where they found. Turns out, uh, they they okay, they were having dinner. That's what this mm-hmm. is the story in the in the subtle Malaysian traits post. I think it's on subtle Asian traits now too, but. They were having dinner with their parents, right? And then they mentioned, oh, I'm just watching this Uncle Roger guy, Nigel Ng. And then the mom was like, oh, Nigel Ng sounds familiar. I think I taught this kid before. And then she racked through her memory and she was like, yeah. She Googled me and saw my Wikipedia. Oh, same hometown as where her kindergarten used to be. And then she was like, okay, I think it's the guy. So the kids then went to find like the, the annals of the kindergarten, the photos they took. And then they found those photos. I don't know where from. I think... One was me celebrating my birthday. I remember uh, every birthday, uh, when you have a birth, when the kid has a birthday in the kindergarten, they would have get uh-huh. a cake, and everybody would you know, sing happy birthday to them. So one of the photos was me celebrating my birthday. You know, which is very cute. I was like maybe five or four. You can see Aww. me smiling in there. I wasn't nerdy yet. Uh, <laughs> and then the other one, I don't know, is just me playing around, laughing around, and I, I still have the same mischie- mischievous smile. You know. But then, very nice. Yeah. Well, when did you become Nigel? Nigel. When did you become Nigel? Nine condoms. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. The shift is gradual. The shift is gradual. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you wake up one day. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck people. I'm gonna fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very gross. That's very. As that's very douchey. That's very douchey. You wake up as a as a little like tiny Nigel nerd. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna fuck people. Yeah, no more maths. It's only pussy from me from now on. It's only pussy now. <laughs> one pussy plus one pussy <laughs> is two pussy. <laughs> Destroy my abacus and bring me pussy. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It's a gradual process. <laughs> that was great. Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Destroy my abacus and bring me some pussy. That is. When else will you ever hear a line like that apart from our podcast? Why are you so proud? When, These when, lines aren't amazing. They're Nigel. pretty good. They're pretty good. When will you hear abacus and pussy in the same uh, sentence? Tell me. <laughs> Probably in a Cardi B song. I can see her do it. I can see her do it. <laughs> but what I found funny was that like you were such a, like like you won a math competition and you were like in the newspaper and stuff but you were like it was deemed cool. It was like Yeah. It's so great because Asia celebrates like that kind of achievement. They celebrate like, you know, academic achievements. If it were in the West, like nobody would care. People yeah. would like you would be so bullied. <laughs> And like you were, it's really impressive because you were the first in your grade um, of 700 people. Like you were number one wow. or something. How'd you know? Because I saw it on the tagged post. Oh yeah. Okay. They did talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was. And it, this was a um, majority like uh, Chinese school, Chinese Malaysian. All of us yeah. were Chinese Malaysian. So it was yeah. very, very competitive. All their parents are like, yeah, we're going to get get you to university, you know, get, get you abroad. It was very competitive. And I still got first out of 700. It's That's pretty, insane. pretty crazy. Of I'm telling you. Of all of your grades, like uh, uh, on aggregate, so every everything summed up, you <gasps> know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really impressive. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is this is what happens when you rank people. 
You know, I, it, it gives you a very good self-esteem boost if you do well, if you do well, of course. But <laughs> if you're like number 695 out of the 700, then yeah, your, your yeah. self-esteem is fucked. Yeah. So you win some, lose some. Okay. It's not an egalitarian society. I got an award for being the nicest person <laughs> <laughs> in my junior high school. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I got an award for being kind. <laughs> a kindness award. A gold medal for kindness. Yeah. No, no, it was like, I think I got a book. I got a book. <laughs> what do you have to do to win that award? What do you have to do to win that award? Just be myself. <laughs> Just let people walk all over me. <laughs> Never oppose anything. That's a terrible award to win. Oh. Uh, it's, but that's, I think it's so telling of us two <laughs> people. And still yes. to this day, you can see that the it's traces. cemented. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nigel, Number, yeah, Uncle yeah. Roger, billions of subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. Evelyn, kind. still kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice I'm she's still, still nice. kind she's still kind <laughs> i still walk all over her uh, you know it's <laughs> uh, so funny it's so funny you would not survive the asian education system man you would oh, not no, survive no 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 no, 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 no. You would crumble i'd be too first of all i'd be too dumb because <laughs> My academic, like, I was terrible in school. Uh, well, I was, I was, you know, in between. I wasn't great. I wasn't bad. But I was, like, in between. Um, and second of all, it would be too much pressure. I just can't handle pressure. <laughs> yeah. But it trains you, you know? It trains you for later life. Because you go through life, there's always going to be pressure. Everything, no matter what career or profession you do, you'll always face pressure. So I, I appreciate my Chinese school upbringing for making yeah. me accustomed to pressure. I sense well, pressure. I'm like, well, I'll rise to the challenge. Well, that's the thing. I think it's very dependent on person, right? Because I got pressure in school as well because I I did uh, the international baccalaureate. Oh, that's um, hard. IB yeah. is hard. Yeah. And uh, I did not do well. <laughs> but that's like, it's intense pressure in the IB program as well. But it's a great education. So I, I really appreciated that. But, but the thing it, is, you, you jumped into the IB program without having been accustomed to pressure exactly. before, you know? But exactly. I, because I was at a Chinese school for like six years, uh, secondary, six years primary, five years secondary. So 11 years of pressure mm -hmm. molded me into this person. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's what it was because going from the Swedish system into the IB, uh -huh. I was like, yeah, uh, you're competing against Chinese people now. You're competing yeah, against Asians yeah, now. <laughs> you don't stand a chance. You don't stand a chance. Imagine I have to tell you about we yes. had this one guy, Kevin Chang, in my <laughs> in my program. And we all had to have, you know, with the IB, you have to have a, a certain curriculum. So you uh -huh. have to have a creative curriculum. And he hated it. He hated <laughs> yes. it so much. He's like, this is such a waste of time, blah, blah, blah. And then we had music as our creative elective. And uh, we all had to, like, perform a song or something. And he was like, ugh, fine. And so he just sat at the piano and he just started playing the Chinese national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, yeah, the, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do the Chinese national anthem. Uh, you can sing along if you know it. And then he <laughs> just started playing it and singing the Chinese national anthem. Because he was like, this is such a waste of time. I'm just gonna do whatever so that I can pass. I mean... It's like the funny, and then like the, the music teacher, she was like, uh. yeah, um, uh, would you like to uh, perform something else? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, no. She's like, okay, okay, that's fine. So did he pass the class? Yeah, yeah he passed. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, just minimally. <laughs> like, it wasn't like... But did he crush it on all the other subjects? He yes. I think he works in finance now. <laughs> I think he's like... I think he went to like Cambridge or Oxford or something, but he's... He's definitely doing very well in life. <laughs> like, very well. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, God. I knew it. I knew it. 
I remember how angry he was. <laughs> just like, and then he just started playing the national anthem. He sounds like, like he sounds like me, you know. Yeah, That's something yeah. I would do. <laughs> Ugh, fine. Dum, 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 dum. Yeah. Uh, just gonna sing Jay Chow. <laughs> oh my god. That's so funny. But oh. I, I think you're right. like pressure is like because I was talking to my therapist about it today. I had mm-hmm. my therapy right before our podcast recording. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I don't I Don't bring worried. don't be bringing that therapy energy into this, okay? It's good. I don't <laughs> like the therapy language. It's always <laughs> you you try to you talk like in that therapy, therapeutic um roundabout way, you know, like I hear what you're saying and I respect your opinion. <laughs> But I hope you can see from my perspective that this is my life experience and it's valid too. Yada, 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 yada. Just say you're a dick and shut up. Okay? <laughs> Just say that. Just say you're wrong. I, I miss those days. I miss the days where people could say, you're fucking wrong. Shut the fuck up. You know? Like, very, very direct. <laughs> Instead of, well, have you considered? Like, shut up. I don't want to consider it. You're wrong. You're wrong. Have you considered you- a different angle? I hear you, and I see where you're coming from, but have you considered... Ugh. It, it, so makes, you, like, it makes people feel I- impotent, you know? Impotent. It makes them feel weak when they disagree with you like that. Don't this you feel that? This is so funny, because saying... saying um, I think you're wrong. Shut up. Stop like stop being a dick. Shut up. Made the people who talk like me <laughs> feel... <laughs> impotent <laughs> and, and inadequate as human beings and not respected and so that's so funny Nigel that you think now like using more like or uh, respectful language uh is like more roundabout and feels more patronizing than just it's, saying it's so patronizing up. If you disagree with me, just say you disagree with me. Don't be like, I, I, I hear you. I respect you. I see where you're coming from. But have you considered? Just just say you disagree. Nigel, I hear you. I see, see where you're coming from. See what from. I'm talking <laughs> And I disagree. This is so I just want to have a fight with somebody. Please. What, what, what is- happened to the good old days of fighting? Of yelling at each other? Why, why is losing your temper considered a bad thing now? It's a, another human emotion, anger. But why is that bad? But why is crying all of a sudden a great thing? Oh, let I it out. See, cry it out. I, you know? I can see why you got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. That yes. That must have been exhausting to come home to. She's done like a whole day at the office. She has like a terrible boss, blah, blah, blah. She comes home and then you're uh, there. Disagree. Disagree! I don't want to do the dishes! <laughs> Why haven't you taken out the trash? I'm not like this every day. I'm just saying what happened to the good old days of fighting verbally. How don't, old don't are you? <laughs> what do you mean the good old days? The good old days! The good old days! Ten years ago! Oh, you sound like a baby boomer. It's what? so funny. That's so funny. I mean, I, 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 um, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, stop <laughs> it stop it that's why i won't ever go to therapy the therapist will just make me angry yeah i'll, I'll fucking like shake her what do i have to do what do i have to do just tell me what i have to do just practical solutions yeah give me a solution to my problem should i call a lawyer should i call a yeah. lawyer <laughs> i'm gonna scare him can you imagine shaking a therapist yeah you're gonna have to call the cops on me. Oh my god, you're gonna shake a baby someday. <laughs> oh, what do you want? Stop yeah. crying! Are you hungry? Have you pooped yourself? Just tell me! Today, uh, Nigel Ung, the comedian behind Uncle Roger, got arrested for shaking his baby. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, <sighs> that's so funny, Nigel. But don't don't you miss fighting? Don't you miss that? I, don't you miss I, fighting? Well, I agree with you. I think that a lot of people hold their emotions in. Like, exactly. no, no. Yeah. I I think using that flowery roundabout language is actually suppressing your emotions. It's actually repressing. That's what I think. I think it's 
No, I think it's dealing with what is causing the anger originally. Like it's I think it's eloquating your anger. No, you just have a huge argument. That's that's how you let it out. Instead of no, but- imagine if someone pisses you off big time, like I'm so 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 pissed off, and then yeah. I have to say I hear you and I respect your opinion, <laughs> but have you considered that is me just I hear you and I respect your opinion, you know? I think it's the opposite. I think it's like, oh my God, I'm so angry. And then it's like, wait, just take a second. What is this person actually saying? Why am I getting angry? What is it that I actually feel? And then it's like, I hear you. I know what you're saying. (laughs) But this is how I feel. (sighs) Right? I think that's... (laughs) that's See, to me, that's repression. To me, that's repression. What you just described. Letting out anger is like, Un, it's unthought through emotion. That's that's why it's so therapeutic and 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 cathartic. Listeners, what yeah. do you think? Leave a comment. What what approach do you do you think? Because I think I think it's fascinating how different we are. Because I feel like it just really just is. letting it out is so cathartic. You know, you it ever really yell? Is. You ever climb up on top of a mountain and then yell? You know that scene in Rocky Four <laughs> where he just trains really hard. To fight that Russian, and he gets yeah. really good. He runs up the mountain, and then Drago. That's what I want. <laughs> you want to be in Rocky Four? Yeah. Which everybody wants to be in Rocky Four. Have you seen Rocky Four? Where he, the Russian kills his best friend, and yeah. he has to take revenge. <laughs> and the Russian's training in a high, 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 like like a lab, super advanced. And oh then Rocky's God. training in a, in, a, in a in a wooden hut, lifting yeah. logs, right? Yeah. And he's running through the snow. Do you think Rocky runs up the mountain and then he, he says to Drago, I hear you. I understand why you had to kill my best friend. But have you considered? Do you think he considers Drago's emotions? No, he just goes, Drago! And then he just crumples up his photo on, uh, in front of his mirror. You can clearly tell I've seen that montage many, many times. Yes, you have. Is that like a motivation montage <laughs> yeah. for you that you look I up I listen on to it sometimes at the gym, you know. Oh my it God. It motivates me. Hearts on fire. Fucking banging track, Okay. Well, I will say... I the whole soundtrack that that... by Vince DiCola is amazing. So, anyways, <laughs> carry on. I think that that film is the same as a Woody Allen film where he's at the therapist's office and he's just talking about his feelings. No. <laughs> so, it's the same emotion, but they're expressed in different ways. Which I'm one would you Allen rather film. watch? You're, you're a Sylvester Stallone film. I'm the cool montage Okay, you are like the. <laughs> I'm the neurotic, yeah. self involved American Jewish person. <laughs> I, I just want to lift the log. I want, yeah. I, I want my trainer, I want, my, my, I want a black guy to be yelling in front of me, uh, by the side of me, <laughs> no pain, no pain, <laughs> no pain. As he's sweating, just... even though he's not training, but the, the, his trainer is sweating, like, no pain, no pain. I want, I want to lift the emotional log <laughs> Well, well, it could be a black therapist is talking to me and saying, how do you feel? <laughs> Express your emotions. Feel your pain. What form does it take? And express it in a healthy way. Maybe you should talk to Drago. <laughs> yeah. Killed your best friend. Give Drago a call. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Invite him into the office. We could have a session together. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine Rocky and Drago? Yeah. And then having couples counseling. Yeah, instead of instead of, <laughs> of a boxing. Of boxing. <laughs> That's a sketch. Yeah. That's a sketch. Yeah. yeah, they just go to couples therapy and yeah. <laughs> work it out. <laughs> Hug it out. How how would oh, a therapist yeah. uh, therapize them? Okay, Drago, do you want to tell Rocky how you feel? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, your friend is annoying. I have to crush him. Yeah. <laughs> Russia better than America. Why do you feel this way, Drago? Was it because your childhood was tough? No, I had perfect childhood. <laughs> oh, come on. I had to fight Tiger. And every time I win, perfect childhood. That sounds very tough, Drago. Thank <laughs> you. Was your family dependent on you winning all these fights? No, they not. They live good life. <laughs> Improvising, you have to say yes so that we can go in. The character is not gonna say yes. Do you think Drago's gonna admit 
His family is <laughs> living a terrible life. <laughs> but that's the point of them doing therapy <laughs> so that we can get no. The, the side point is Drago's Drago. not going to be therapy. <laughs> Drago's yes, a brick is. wall. <laughs> that's the point <laughs> I'm gonna of the say, sketch. No, Russia government take care of us very well. Better than American government. Everybody fat in America. <laughs> There's not going to be a solution if we keep saying no. <laughs> Be- because it doesn't work It's not gonna work on Drago You think therapy is gonna work on Ivan Drago Who can oh, kill a guy But that's the point of the sketch It's the point of the sketch Nigel I think the sketch is The point of the sketch is the therapist will just get so frustrated She oh. gives up I think that's the That's gonna be you I think know? the point of the sketch is like Watching somebody as um Stoic as uh, as Ivan Drago just get mentally broken down and be like, yes. <laughs> and then my father, he said he would come back after he went to the grocery store, and he never did. That's why I now punch twenty one hundred psi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because when I see my father, I'm gonna punch him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just imagine the punching bag being my father's face. Yeah. Why did you leave, Dad? Why? <laughs> I don't know about this plot. I don't know. We're I don't so know different. if Drago's. I, I don't think Drago's gonna break in front of a therapist. <laughs> you know, we're so different. We can't even write a sketch together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> that's so funny. <sighs> but okay, so you talk to your therapist. I talk to my therapist, and so you repress all your emotions before this. Okay, and and tell me more. <laughs> well, we were talking about pressure, and we were talking about um. Uh, uh, success and like how I, how I feel like I've um not gotten somewhere that I want to be. Like I, I just turned uh, thirty three. I just had a birthday, so I think that kind of piled onto it as well. But also, you have to remember that nobody feels that they are where they should be. Yeah, nobody's happy. True. Nobody's happy. So I think yeah. you're feeling a very normal human emotion. That's called yeah. ambition. It's called striving for something you don't have. I think what you're feeling is really, really positive. And if your therapist okay. is trying to beat that out of you, she's trying to fuck up your life. <laughs> I think you need that. You should never be happy where you are, people. But it's only positive. It's only positive if then I do something about it. And oh, I yeah, feel well, like yeah. <laughs> I'm incapable of doing something about it. <laughs> that was kind of thing. Because we were talking about pressure and stuff, and I'm like, I'm bad at handling pressure. And... um I think it's because, and also I'm bad at, I, I, I kind of realize that I think I, I don't want to be that visible because I don't want to get critiqued because basically I've been critiqued all my life um, because I have always been overweight. And so, you know, fat shaming within Asian culture and stuff, that's always been a thing. So my parents have always uh, critiqued that and then other stuff as well. Um like the choice of career and all of that stuff, like the typical kind of immigrant, you know, first generation Asian story. Yeah, even if um, you weren't overweight, you would get critiqued too. So there's yeah, no escaping. Exactly. You have then I get deal critiqued for it. being slim. Like yeah. when we were kids, me and my best friend, you know, Sohan, uh-huh. um, she was, she's like so thin. She's she's really skinny, and then I was like really like uh, plus size and overweight and then so when i was at her house her mom would say like why don't you eat like evelyn why don't you you're so skinny blah blah blah. and then when she was at my house my mom would be like why are you eating so much why aren't you skinny like her and so it was like you know it was both yeah you know it's it's kind of disappointing how i've been uh roasting you and critiquing you for like a year now and you're still not used to getting critiqued i'm like what (laughs) is has all my work gone to waste was that work? Was I would that expect, really work, Nigel? I would expect, regardless of whether or not it was work, I would expect at this point, you should be used to getting critiqued by now. I do an hour of that every week. Even oh when we have a guest gosh. around, I'm still roasting you. Well, the thing is, in my mind, it's just like, it's true. <laughs> it's not like, it's not like... <laughs> No, no, no. It's it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's a comedy thing. So it's like, ah, oh, that's fun. But I, there was a period of time where I remember at the beginning before I moved to London, I was so fine with getting roasted. I was so like I was laughing at it and stuff. And then I moved to London and stuff happened and I was so sensitive about how I was perceived by other people that I couldn't even take a joke about myself. And I think that that 
um, really inhibited my development just as a person. Um, but then also it's, it's this thing of like, you know, you, you have your parents and, you know, I've been hearing critique from them all, you know, throughout my life. And then yeah. even now, even now, like with my dad, he was driving me. So he was driving me to the train station to go so I could take a train to go to Stockholm to do work on a TV show where I have a part. And he was in the car saying, he was like, why, when are you going to get a real job? Why, why do you keep doing this? Why, why are you stressing? Why do you keep putting, like, this is so stressful. Why, like, you don't have any money, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you're literally driving me to go to work. Yeah, you're driving me to money, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you say that to him? Why don't you say that to him? All right, Francis. I hear where you're coming from. I respect your opinion. But you are driving me to money, bitch. <laughs> so as someone who worked in a takeaway, I don't feel you're qualified to criticize my line of work. Okay? <laughs> Sweet and sour pork and comedy... No relation. You can't say anything. <laughs> you don't know shit about my industry, Francis Mock. Use his full name too. That's how you know he's. That's how he knows you're angry at him. <laughs> Use his full. Use name. his full Chinese name. What's his Chinese name? Uh, T M Xing Shi Mock. Xing Shi Mock. Yeah. You are driving me to money, okay? Xing Shi Mock. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese name starts with the surname, man. It's to be Mock Xing Shi, not not Xing yeah. Shi Mock. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, well, Ti Tai is like his nickname. I don't know what is. Don't his don't like? nickname. Full name. Full name. Yeah, yeah. Full name is. Uh, oh, I I've never heard my dad's full name. Wow, Shit. what a wow. great daughter! And you wonder why your dad hates you. You don't even know his name. You don't even know his. Name. He raised you for like twenty something years, and you can't remember his name. What do you wow. mean twenty something years? Okay, eighteen years. Whatever. 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 What? He raised you. You assume he point. was absent? You're right. But <laughs> and ironically, I can see where he's coming from, you know? They are from a different generation. Yeah. And your dad works in a Chinese takeaway. How emotionally liberated do you think he's going to be? He's not going <laughs> to see your perspective ever. Of course, your dad's going to be like emotionally retarded because he spent more time with a walk than with human beings. <laughs> You expect him to be like, oh, go chase your dreams. Go chase your dreams, daughter. I'm so proud of you. No! <laughs> he was frying a chow mein for eight hours. <laughs> he has no time for empathy. He's only interacting with the walk. So he's yeah. like, why is my daughter so complicated? Yeah. Like this walk, walk is so just, simple. Yeah, walk. The walk never wants anything. He, the walk do, does what I'm told. If I turn it on, it gets hot and I can fry things. If I turn it off, it gets cold. Yeah, <laughs> that's his world. And you want him to understand your world of entertainment and oh acting God, and writing so and treatments and producers. <laughs> of course, he's not going to get it. Right? That's very funny, Nigel. So, <laughs> um, what do you expect? I mean, I know this. Of course, I know this. It's like we all know this, and I I understand uh, their perspective. Have but you tried like... to understand his perspective? Have you bought your own walk? <laughs> Have you tried to work one day in his shoes? <laughs> I huh? just buy a walk, and I'm yeah. like, hmm, this is how my dad feels. Yeah, while I'm do it. Work in his <laughs> shoes. For 10 hours a day, staring at a sweaty walk, and then you smell like Chinese food, and then you go home, and you're like, yeah, I, I don't want my offspring to do acting. Then you'll see <laughs> Then you'll see how he feels. It's like, fuck, am I sweating into this walk, staring at it for 10 hours a day to only see my daughter pursue this acting shit? <laughs> then you'll see where he's coming from. Oh, that's so funny. Try it. One Father's Day. Tell them. Tell her that, you know, Francis, I'm going to give you the best present ever this Father's Day, which is an, un an understanding of your life. <laughs> so for one day, can you bring me to your Chinese restaurant and I will be the chef, you know? I will be the chef. Yeah. I did work in the takeaway, um, but I never walked anything. I just worked at the register. <laughs> yeah, it's different. It's different. Yeah, I know. It's way harder in the walk. It's hot. You're sweating. You're probably breathing in all the <laughs> cancer from yeah, all the fumes. I know. And all My the dad's... other chefs are smoking. You're probably breathing all that secondhand smoke in. 
my no. dad's been coughing now for a while, and I'm like, please go and get checked. Exactly. And he's like, it's fine. So yeah, <laughs> forgive him if he doesn't get the world of entertainment. No, well, I mean that's the thing. Like, I, of course I know this. Like, I have, I do understand my, pr- uh, I do understand my parents' perspective. Of course, um, I've been uh, because it is that thing of like. You know, they they just want you to have a secure job, and as you say, like they spent he spent twenty hours a day. Your dad spent more walk time with your with his walk than with your mom. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm sure your mom looks at the walk and gets envious. Oh, oh if only Francis on, would touch Nigel. me that much. If only Francis would touch me ten hours a day instead of Gross. the ten minutes every night. <laughs> Gross. I just I just want to be your it. walk, Francis. Treat me like your walk this Valentine's Day. Sweat all over me. Just get on top of me and sweat all over me. And toss me like you toss your favorite walk. Oh, God. So and put gross. oil all over me. And, sh- and share me around with your other chef friends. I appreciate how funny it is, but because it's about my parents, it's so gross. So just- you don't want to riff with me? You don't I don't want to riff with you. I don't. Not when it's about my parents. Stop a spatula on me, Francis. Stop it! Stop! You're so gross. My parents really like you. They support you. They keep asking about you. So stop this. Yeah. <laughs> Light the fire under me, Francis. Oh. They will love this. They're, I think they are going to find it funny. If they could understand what I'm saying, they'll find it hilarious. Stop. My mom's... <laughs> Your mom needs to get late too, you know. My mom is very good at English. Excuse me very much. Okay. Well, share this clip with her and see what her reaction is. I guarantee you she'll be like, yeah, I've had a thought every now and then. (laughs) (laughs) Can you imagine marriage vows with a Chinese takeaway chef? You know, and then it's like, will you treat her, your uh, lawfully wedded wife, like your walk through sickness and health? Oh, this is terrible. <sighs> terrible <sighs> stuff. <laughs> I just want to feel your walk hay in me, Francis. Stop it. Stop it. That was a very good line. That was a very thank good you, line. Thank you. Thank you. I was very it. proud of myself. I'm going to play this. You make me feel special. It's great. Thank <laughs> you are eating my pussy, boy. <laughs> I forgot about sound effects sometimes, yeah, but I know. Yeah, that was, was such a time. great riff. And it was such a great riff despite only me riffing. Imagine yeah. if you joined in. How amazing would that be? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I really don't know what this podcast is doing to me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's helping my confidence or if it's shutting me down even more. No, because- I'm just helping you understand your parents better you know uh it's that's the thing like i i do understand them and i understand you know it is that thing where they put all their effort into running a takeaway they want their kids to have a secure income yeah Um, okay i mean that's what i was saying i I mean i I phrased that somewhat differently but that's what i was saying just be quiet man (laughs) just be quiet sorry sorry okay (laughs) We've had the funny part. We've had the funny part. We now need the serious part. Okay. <laughs> to, to go in. I, I always disagree with having need, needing the serious part, but sure, some people like that's it because the, they're boring. That's the vibe of the podcast, Nigel. <laughs> okay, you have you, to have the floor. You have the floor. You, Yang, cut cut to full screen Evelyn now. Cut to full screen Evelyn. Oh, stop it. Okay, but full screen Evelyn. Hi. <laughs> oh god but okay so i was talking i was telling my therapist i know that that's what they want because they're immigrant parents they want their kids to grow up and have like a steady income and i also heard this thing where working class parents want their kids to grow up to be uh white collar uh white collar want their kids to grow up to be academics academics want their kids to grow up to be artists and so my parents are working class and i skipped all the way to artist. So I skipped mm-hmm. several steps. Um, mm-hmm. 
And so the thing is, I, I do understand them, but I th- I was just like letting out my frustration. And I said, but I want them to understand me. Like, I, I feel like they need to put in some effort to understand me and be like, and also see what I'm doing because I am getting steady work. I am financially able to support myself. I made basically all my rent at the beginning of the year. Well, let, let, with an asterisk, uh, you live with four other people, so your rent's really cheap anyway. <laughs> it's not like you're living in a Mayfair penthouse. And then you're like, hey, dad, I made my whole year's rent in two months. And uh, where do you live? Five other single guys. Oh, one of them is 45. Oh, oh, nice part of London. No. Oh, oh. You're so- <laughs> is that really an achievement, daughter? Is that really? A- just, just say it. Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> you sound just like them. <laughs> Did they ask Asian. you all these questions? Did you ask you all these questions? <laughs> but now that you say it, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's probably what they. Yeah, you have, you have to qualify a little bit. <laughs> that's a huge difference. That's a huge difference. Oh, but, that's but so I, I, funny. I see what you mean. Carry on. Back to full. <laughs> back to full screen, Evelyn, please. Yeah, back to full screen, Evelyn. Oh, I can't believe our dynamic works <laughs> as well as it does. Listen, I'm not your therapist. Uh, I don't get paid to hear you bitch about your problems. We have to actually make this podcast kind of funny, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so t- t- that's why I'm not just going to listen to you like a therapist. Because I'm sure if you put out that, uh, that hour long as an episode of the podcast with you and your uh-huh. therapist, nobody's listening to that. <laughs> nobody's listening to that. Actually, she was actually talking about starting a podcast really? with me. <laughs> I don't want to start it. I don't want to listen. Stop it. Don't. You'll bore people to death, <laughs> Evelyn's therapist. Wouldn't it be funny if I started a podcast with my therapist? <laughs> I feel like that would be the ultimate, like, warning sign that something's wrong. <laughs> it's like me giving up. It's like... So, see, this is the kind of thing when oh. you tell your dad will uh-huh. make him worry about your free, your future. <laughs> dad, I started a <laughs> podcast with my therapist. So many worrying things in that sentence. <laughs> so many worrying things. <laughs> Oh my god, that would be so funny. Like honestly, like ugh. when my dad found out that I go to therapy, he's like, "Why? What's wrong? Are you crazy? Are you? What's wrong with you?" Yeah. Oh god. Okay, but, but anyways, yeah. carry on, carry on. Back to the full screen, Evelyn. You told your dad I- you made all your rent <laughs> in two months. Okay. No, but it's the thing of like I just feel I'm like it's just exhausting having to justify everything about myself that's the exhaustion and the fact that it's coming from people in my family it's like oh you're overweight okay oh you don't have a real job okay oh you're going to therapy well they haven't talked we haven't talked about that but it's like that's coming that's coming that's coming that's coming (laughs) but it's like it's the thing of having to justify yourself and your humanity Mm -hmm constantly and so that's why i think i'm i'm also sensitive to criticisms because it, it's gone outward as well because i do like talking about this stuff but then it does become that even though i'm talking about it i don't i don't want to let it define me but then i, I can't help it because that's what i have to keep on justifying you know I don't know. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. You're making so many logical leaps there. You know? Okay. I, I, I don't want to let it define me, but it defines me. No, it doesn't define you. Everybody has problems, man. I think you Everybody should be trying to be friends. Problems. It's like, you should try to find some orphans and try to be friends with them. Because then your problems would be like, oh, you know, my dad keeps... Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> you, know? you never have parents who keep telling you you're fat. Oh, you're an orphan? Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> And they'll be like, I wish I had my parents who told me I was fat, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. I I, I get well, it. I, 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 I don't see the logical leaps you made just then. The fact that you talk about problems a lot doesn't mean it defines you, you know? 
No, no. But the fact that the thing is, I want to stop thinking about, you know, can I just have a moment where nobody brings it up? But it's always constantly brought up, you know? And so it becomes this thing where you it becomes like a trap because you want mm -hmm. to you want to not that's not what you think about uh, or that's not how you want to be, you know, picked on. Um, mm. but then other people will do that to you. And then you're like, oh, this again, again. Okay. It this again. And then it's like, I have to talk about it. I have to talk about my race. I have to like, yeah, that's kind of, that's, if uh... you're not of the convention, that is what people then will notice about you. And even when they're trying to give a compliment, because I was talking about, I was talking to, um, a girl for an interview about, uh, fat shaming in, in Asian culture. She was writing an article about that and she was saying, she said something very kind, which was, you are such a, just by being you uh, and just by being in a, like just by being here, you're such an inspiration and role model to everybody. And I'm like, why? I'm yeah, just being me. She's lying so just you. being me, just existing as I am in a public space, just because I'm not skinny, just because I'm not white, just because I'm Asian and plus size, then that means that I automatically am, you know, brave for Listen, existing in a public space just for being me. I'm sure she was just trying to be nice and she doesn't mean <laughs> it at all. I don't think you're a hero for existing, okay? What? No, but that I think people do put that on to people. Like Lizzo, she's talked about it as well, where she's like, people think that I'm, they're like, oh, she's so great because she's big and she's black. And she's like, and she, she was talking about it on Letterman. She's like, I don't want to be an activist. Because, because what, what, what is factors. the alternative? You cancel the people who call anybody fat. What do you expect them to say? The society now, you, you can't even use that word anymore. It's such a bad word. So... Of course, people want to go the other direction and be nice, you know, and, and say that. I know that we're at a beginning stage here and it's always it's like there's always growing pains, but it's not it's the thing of like we we're still if we're still talking about a person's appearance, we're still defining them by their appearance. There's no there's no development, really. It's just that we've learned that, oh, it's not OK to be critical of somebody else's appearance in public because it's not a nice thing to do. But then it's like, oh, but then we're going to celebrate that person for the way they look instead. But then it's like, no, well, no, because then the onus is on how they look again. So it's like, there's no development. It's the same. There's never going to be in, development. We're using I the same tools. Yeah, you know? there's never going to be development because that will be forever be the first thing we notice about someone. Yeah, the standards of beauty will change, but we will forever be tied to, we are human beings. We are very visual creatures. We see things from far away. Hate to break it to you, but I don't see it changing in the next hundred years. Physical appearance is always going to be something people care about and will sort of define you. The, the same way, you know, people see me, my race defines me because it's a visual characteristic. My hair, my clothes, what I wear. It's not going to change, man. And another thing, I've heard this, my cousin told me this ages ago when I went to visit her in Shanghai. And she, I, I tell her, because I just started having a day job, it was quite stressful and I hated it. And because my, my boss was very, you know, mean and uh, very harsh on me, I was like, how do you deal with that? And she works in Shanghai, Asia, where the bosses are harsh as fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I can handle it there. She said something very, that resonates, I still remember to this day. Uh, and she said in Mandarin, uh, which means that's someone else's mouth. When they say things, I can't control what they say. So what I control is how I feel about what they say, and I just ignore it. You know, so that's, that's the kind of implication that... I think that's like a good attitude to have. It is a good attitude to have. And I do agree with you. I think we will be... No, you don't agree with me. You're just using that certain roundabout language again. You know? No, 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 no. No, I do agree with you because I know that appearance is a factor. Like people, it is like the first impression you get of somebody. Uh -huh. But I feel like we need to put less onus on it. You know, we, we could put more... Um, we could put more focus on people who who are actually saying something important, who are actually like expressing interesting opinions and, mm -hmm. and thinkers. We could put more effort into celebrating them instead of like, you know, the Kardashians or, yeah, yeah. or th the same superficial way things like that. More people should read Dostoevsky, but they're never going to. So you're yeah. in for a hard time if you have this idealist version of the world, you know? <laughs> Oh, God. I No, I understand what you're saying. I do. It's just, 
it's tough. It's tough when you're constantly in the pile that isn't appreciated, you know? Yeah, I don't know what to say apart from, don't let it get to you. <laughs> I try to has, not. Has a therapist uh, said... She probably can't say these words, right? Don't let it get to you. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, but the thing is, it's yeah. it's easy to say don't let it get to you because if you just face it, if that's what you kind of are up against all the time and from the people that are supposed to be the support, you know, of course yeah. I can let it not get to me, but it's almost as if I have no choice sometimes because it's always coming. So it's that's kind of the exhaustion. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing much I can say apart from, yeah, still, don't let it get to you. Yeah. This is your your in for the long haul. Find ways to recover from it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Why did it get so serious now? I don't then? know. I don't know. There's no solution to this problem. Mm. The world's a shit place. Don't let it get to mm. you. You know? I think I think you're doing good, you know. You want to start going to the gym. Which have you started going to the gym? Yes. Oh really? Nice! Hey! <laughs> it didn't discount, do much, though. The F A R discount. <laughs> oh, I really regret telling you about the F A R scheme. Sometimes, when your government fat shames you, it actually works. Oh, people take in incentive, uh, mm -hmm. like initiate. Mm -hmm. People take initiative. Mm -hmm. And in your case, how was your experience? Tell people this new experience for Evelyn. What do you mean new? It's like I'm you're just saying, kidding. I just like play. I've never been to the gym before. That was the joke. I know you've been. I know you've been. But tell, tell, <laughs> tell us about it. I'm really happy that you've decided to take positive steps for your health. As a friend, I'm very happy about that. But I'm gonna try to make it funny still. So let's go. <laughs> the worst person to be sincere with. What? Right, um. I've been well. I didn't do much. I just went on the uh, el eclipse, ellipse, elliptical, e elliptical, <laughs> eclipse. <laughs> I don't know what's That's, called. The eclipse is what when you see the moon covering the sun. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, I thought it was the same name. Oh, elliptical the elliptical okay. um that's that's like my favorite one because i can't really run because my i have weak ankles listen i think that's your favorite one because it's the least effort and that's a terrible way to start your gym session it's about no, effort it's about eff you need to put effort in evelyn i am putting effort in it was <laughs> really just... is this effort does yeah. it like effort to you it is I did that last time I lost 15 kilos just doing that. <laughs> so that was okay. Good. Well, I'm just happy you are st started to go. Okay, you did yeah. the elliptical. Okay. I and... did the elliptical uh, and that was it. But I think I'm I'm going to get a personal trainer so that they can Ooh. train me. Yeah. They're going to do it do it hard. They're going to go hard on you. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's great though. Happy yeah. for you. How many Thank times you. do you go a week now? Oh, I just start. I just started because I was in Stockholm for the filming and stuff. Okay, but well, what's your um, plan? What are your goals? What's my plan? Well, as often as I can, really. Um, no, no, no. Commit to something. Okay, three times a week, maybe. Good. Stick to it. Every Stick other to it. Day? Yeah, every other day. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Great. I'm happy for you. How much time should I spend there? Depends on your routine. Oh. Forty-five an hour is enough. Okay. But it's it's about the effort. It's Quality over quantity, you know? Yeah. People can be at the gym, but if they're on their phone, on the treadmill, it's kind of walking, you can be there for two hours. But if I go in 45 minutes, come out, but I'm fucking exerting effort mm -hmm. with every move, then my workout's going to yield more results. But all, all, that, all that talk aside is... Oh, sorry, please. No, but I heard... So I'm bringing you back to Lee Dong Wook because okay. people loved it when we talked about him last time. But... Yeah. Uh, he's at the gym like three hours a day. I think a lot of Korean actors, they're like mm -hmm. at the gym like three hours a day. It's insane. Okay. Yeah, well, that's part of their job. So they yeah. have to. But we mm -hmm. we don't need to look that good to survive. We just need to be funny. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're going for your diabetes, not for your I career, am. okay? <laughs> I am going for my diabetes. <laughs> yeah, it's great. One, you're gonna you're gonna get healthier, mm -hmm. and that's why you're talking about Lee Dong Wook now because you know maybe you're starting to get healthier. You're starting to get a bit of a libido in. You know, <laughs> that's when you know you're getting healthier. By the way, you start having a libido. Like when you feel like sucking a dick, that's when you know you're healthy. Die, yeah, if that thought ever crosses your mind, oh, you need to suck a dick right now, and then you're like, oh, I'm healthy. 
I'm really healthy. My blood sugar is normal. My blood pressure is normal. I love these thoughts. I I don't think there's ever been a woman who's like, oh, I really need to suck a dick right now. Like that. Like the- healthy women think that all the time. Okay. I sucking a dick isn't that pleasurable. Listen, listen. A lot of people enjoy it. Okay. A and lot of people enjoy. A it. lot of people. Some not everybody. Sure, but I'm. My point is the libido is a good sign. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm just phrasing it in a comedic way. But mm-hmm. having a libido is a good sign. They are getting healthier. Okay. That's what so... I mean. Okay. So if you ever feel my pussy needs some pounding, then oh you know God. you're making good strides in your health. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I just get a bit exhausted <laughs> during the recording. Why? Why? You need to be funny. This is, again, this is effort. Put some effort in. Don't treat this don't treat this recording like an elliptical. I can't keep I can't keep supporting your your jokes. I can't keep what, what It's joke? too much what effort. Jokes? What jokes? What effort? Just riff with me. All Just riff my with laughing, me. all my laughing listeners and and YouTube viewers. That's the effort I put in. Okay, yeah. that's the effort yeah, I put in. Laughing at Nigel's semi-offensive things to tone it down and to show you guys that it's okay to laugh at it and that he <laughs> me- he meant it as a joke. That's the effort I'm putting in. So who's putting in the more effort here? <laughs> How was that offensive? How is me saying this pussy needs some pounding? That wow, I'm healthy. How is that offensive? Let's analyze that. <laughs> it's just gross. It's just gross. Oh my god. Oh my god. So, have uh, you had those thoughts yet? Or are you still not healthy enough? <laughs> Oh my god. I'll be honest with you. I've uh <laughs> Riff with so, me. Come on, come on. Um <laughs> I obviously want to go to Korea. Mm-hmm. Um but I've I've also like Nigel, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I hope to one day be in a place where I feel like I can be 100% myself and be kind. I want to be um I want to ha- be comfortable and brave enough to be kind even though um the world is tough. That's a good play. That's a good goal. That's a good goal. <laughs> and well, that's well, when well, I'll well, know well. that I'm healthy when I feel like I can give of myself and uh, without the fear of being attacked. Do you feel you're attacked right now a lot? I feel like that's... I feel like I have a fear of being a- attacked because of things that have happened previously in my life. You know, I was actually attacked. And I also have the fear <laughs> of being attacked. But sometimes I have to realize, yes, I do get PTSD when I walk down the street sometimes. But... Life goes on. I can't I can't stop living because of this threat of attack. You know? And that's the philosophy I'm going to use to live my life. It goes on. How are you so emotionally healthy? I don't know. Because <laughs> uh I went to a Chinese school. Oh my god. And I express my emotions without beating around the bush. <laughs> I fight. <laughs> You know? Oh dear. I hate to admit it, but you are probably one of the most healthiest people I've met. I was Um, married for like four years. You know, you have to learn how to live with someone, you you know, and maybe you you learn some maturity in there. I hope you do. I mean, I I I hope that your marriage shaped you in some way. I mean, if it did, it did. It did. It did. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that those are good goals to have. But you need to add one thing to those goals, you know? Don't say it. You want to be hornier. Yeah, don't, you just okay. need to be hornier. 
it changes a lot of things. If you're horny all the time, you don't have time to think about your place in society. You know? I, I, <laughs> Trust me, we are put on this world to procreate. And if we don't do that evolutionarily, we are going against e evolution. And that's why we, we are depressed because our biology wants this, but you're, 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 you're too smart for yourself. You're like, I don't want dick, I want books. You don't even read. You don't even read, so I don't know why I'm saying that. <laughs> I don't want dicks, I want emotions and talking about stuff. But evolutionary, it's like your body's like, no, we want dick now. <laughs> And if you don't get dick, it manifests itself as depression, anxiety, high blood pressure, diabetes. You know, all, all those stuff. You're I'm onto something. I might be saying, onto something here. You're basically saying you just need to get laid. Oh, stop it. Blah, blah, blah. Stop whining. You just need to get laid. It's like all of these like right wing trolls on Twitter <laughs> when they tweet women, when they're trolling women. Ah, oh, she just needs some dick. No, so funny. I will never say that to any random woman, but I'll say that to you because I know <laughs> a lot about you. And I think, I think it genuinely would help. Mm. It won't solve all your problems, <laughs> but I think it would genuinely help. Uh. Like, it won't hurt, and it might help. And that's what we need in life, right? See you next week, people. I See you next it. week. <laughs> I hate it.